<laughs> Buckle up because we have every single EQ qualifier coming to the Bassmaster Elite Series on this week's show. JT Tompkins, John Garrett, Trey McKimmy, Robert G, Tyler Williams, Wesley Gore, Logan Parks, Ben Milliken, and Kyle Patrick all join me this week on... <laughs> I'm Bob Cobb from the Bassmaster. Welcome to Mercer. Welcome one. Welcome all. Friends, family, freeloaders, fishing freaks. You're all welcome here at the Awkwardly Honest Fishing Podcast. That goes by my last name, which is Mercer. Happy Hump Day. I want to welcome in all our humpers to tune in week after week. And hopefully this show helps you get through Hump Day. This is the 140th edition of this particular show and i thank you guys for making this show what it is i have talked to you guys about this in the past i love doing this show i love the conversations we get to have i love interacting with you guys the only thing i hate about this particular project is booking guests so i decided this week leading up to christmas when i'm facing the panic of realizing i haven't bought a gift yet well i did i bought a gift for my wife um, a month ago online, and I just got a notice that said it's leaving China today. I, did, I didn't even know it was coming from China, but it, evidently it is, like a lot of things. Um, but it probably won't be here for Christmas, so I need to do Christmas shopping. But I also thought it'd be good to get all nine EQ qualifiers, all nine of them that made it through the Bassmaster Opens, get them on this particular show and uh, get to know them because... Um, the one thing that everybody's talking about is is how young they all are. I mean, Ben Milliken, 34 years old, and he is the oldest qualifier of all nine of them. Um, speaking of the youth movement, just when you think these guys are super young, along comes Aaron Yavorsky. This past weekend, winning the Toyota Team Championship in Florida and becoming the youngest Bassmaster Classic qualifier ever, 17 years old. I didn't even have my driver's license. It's I, I well, I don't know if he does have his driver's license, but I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think I was mature enough to have my driver's license till I was eighteen. I was mature enough to make that decision, evidently. But seventeen years old, he's already qualified for the Bassmaster Classic. It is unbelievable. Um, I cannot wait to um, get to know that young kid and watch that whole situation unfold but back to this week's guests we have a nine qualifiers from the Bassmaster Opens the oldest of which is Ben Milliken at 34 years old um it is incredible and and one of the things that I try to promote always on this show um and in life generally I think that we should always show reverence to the past I mean you didn't get here without them so always respect the past but that being said people should always respect the future and i think in a lot of ways this group of anglers the the narrative if you haven't met them that floats around is they're a bunch of kids that only use forward-facing sonar and that's all you get i mean they, they can hardly cast i mean they just i mean they play video games all day well, we're going to find out about that. We're going to have all nine of them on here, and we're going to get to know them. And I think what you're going to find is it's an amazing, amazing group. Outside of just their diversity and how different they are, I mean, let's just look at the numbers. I mean, Best on Tour, which is a weekly newsletter that comes out, which you should subscribe to. It's free, and it's awesome. It kind of gives you the inside, the scoop, different things going on in the industry. It's called Best on Tour. Uh, my buddy Panger has run their rap for the last few years. But they came out with the average finishers of these qualifiers. And if you look at all nine of the qualifiers, it is startling how good you had to fish to make it here. I'm just looking quickly right now. You look at JT Tompkins, who won Angler of the Year. His average finish was 16.8 out of nine events all across the country. Right behind him, John Garrett, a former classic qualifier through the Bassmaster College Series. His average finish was 18.3. Trey McKinney, who is 18 years old and maybe 
more mature than I am today. Wait till you meet this kid. His average finish was 23.9. It goes on and on. But literally everybody, I mean, in, in fields of 225 votes, the worst finish. It, everybody finished in the top half of the field in every single event. And the worst average, and this is not an insult, but the worst average to slide into qualifying was Kyle Patrick, who was the final qualifier at 42.6. That was his average finish, 42.6. It's unbelievable. Going into the season, there was many people who predicted with the shift to go to all nine, that number was going to shove down. I mean, if you had told somebody you're going to – you're going to finish 42nd. Your average is going to be 42nd. They'd figure for sure I'm in near the top. Well, not even close to it. They shattered a ton of numbers. And I think what you're going to find is they're very different. And 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 to be honest, this is something that this show, these conversations, this is something that I try to do most years. I mean, I try to call the incoming rookies before they get to the Elite Series just to say hi, just to get to know them a little bit. But this time I decided to allow you guys in on that. And this is one of the most peculiar set of interviews I've ever done. All nine of them are all here, and it is an emotional roller coaster. We go everywhere with this. Um, stick tuned. You're going to enjoy this. I mean, it is kind of like speed dating it's the Speed Dating Elite Series Rookie Roundup. Maybe I'll use that title, or maybe I'll think of something better. But um, they're all very different. They're all very talented, and they are all a big part of the future of our industry. And they are all living out a dream. And that is something that should always be respected. Um, showing you just how different they all are. Our first guest, we're going to go in order. From, from ninth to first. Um, our first guest uh, is incredibly... Part of me is upset he made the Elite Series. I mean, I'm excited for him. He won an open. He's going to be in the Classic this year. But Kyle Patrick is one of the most talented meme makers there is out there. He has always posted some really, really funny memes. If you don't follow him, you need to. You need to follow all these guys. Um, but... But And this meme that I'm about to show you was not even out when we had our discussion. And I kind of wish it was because we could have talked about that. But it is so good. And, um, I mean, it's kind of – it's it's the festive season. It's Christmas season. I mean, this is one of my favorite Christmas shows ever. And he made a meme out of it. So before I introduce Kyle Patrick, or while I introduce Kyle Patrick, let's let his meme introduce him and buckle up. Because we get all nine and and they are fine. How cheesy was that? I am the king of fromage. Well, sir, someday I'd like to be a, a professional bass fisherman. What? A bass fisherman? Hermie wants to be a bass fisherman. Hermie wants to be a bass fisherman. Hermie wants to be a bass fisherman. What a bass Loser. 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 I've been studying. It's fascinating. You have no idea. Swamp donkeys, forward-facing sonar... Rippin' lips. So, Mr. Bassmaster, have you entered any tournaments yet? Well, one. It was a Tuesday nighter in Erie, PA. And? I came in dead last. But I caught him in practice. Are you f***ing kidding me right now? You're an elf, and elves make toys, not the Bassmaster elites. Now get back to work. <laughs> Poor Hermie, all he wants for Christmas is to throw the hammer down on a couple of hogs. Maybe Santa can help him with a gift for Christmas. A hundred thousand dollars for a boat? Have you lost your damn mind, Jiminy Crickets? Meanwhile, at the Island of Misfit Toys... Did someone say forward-facing sonar? You're gonna ruin bass fishing! Kyle Patrick, you are officially a bass master... Elite Series Pro, you're a Bassmaster Classic qualifier, and of course you won in the Opens last year. But other than that, this is my opportunity to get to know you. First of all, the most important question, am I saying your name correctly? Yes. Yes, you are. Yep. Good. Good. Well, that's a good start. Kyle Patrick. That is a good start, Dave. That is <laughs> a good been, start. There's been other times where it hasn't been quite as smooth. I called Ot Defoe 
Ot Duffo for three years, and now everybody calls him that. And then he corrected me at the classic one year, so that's why it became Ot Defo. But dude, what has it been like? I mean, the the you go through the emotional roller coaster of qualifying first of all, and yeah. now um, you get through that. But what has it been like since then? Yeah, I mean the the emotional roller coaster is a wild one in the opens. I mean the stress that I think gets put, you, you put on yourself. You put on yourself a t- like so much stress, and I tried to stay away from it, but it's just inevitable. So dealing with that pressure is something that I think is really good for an angler, though, right? Like, yeah, because there's always going to be pressure, whether you're on the elites, whether you're a seasoned veteran, whether you're a rookie, you're going to have pressure. So that's something I needed to get used to. Um, and then I got better at this year, which is a good thing. Um, but as far as after, man, it's been, you know, I had about a day or two of just relief and then it was straight back to work because it takes a lot of work to be able to, uh, do this sort of fishing, uh, you know, deal fully through and through. I quit my, my sales job that I was doing a lot of uh, I was doing uh, medical sales, actually. Nice. I had a buddy I met through fishing, and uh, he got me started in it, and it, he gave me the ability to fish the opens um, and, and, you know, also work, which is important because it's not cheap. And uh, But now I've built relationships with companies, and I've been able to step away from that and go full-time fishing but really full-time working in the fishing industry and fishing that's that's sort of how i uh like approach sponsorships i I have very few sponsors that are just paying me to fish i very very few but i have a lot of relationships built and sponsors that i work for that then give a little gravy on top because i'm on the elite you know that's sort of how it goes were you i mean obviously the the Fouts video made a big stir with people, but, but I mean, I, I really feel like, and I said it right to his face. Like, I don't think people point at social media and say, well, it's different now, but social media 15 years ago was trade shows and magazines and different, you know, you've always had to put in that work. It sounds like you're pretty prepared for this next step. I, I think so. I think, you know, I've been, I've been, I I work really hard when I'm off the water. Like that's my number one goal is to be better than everyone else at off the water tasks. And hopefully the fishing as well. But what I can guaranteed control is being the hardest worker when I step off the boat and work for my sponsors. And I saw that as a kid right away with all the best, uh, you know, KVD, Mike Iconelli, uh, Greg Hackney, all these guys, that's what they do. And I, I saw that I didn't, ju- I, I saw through all the, you know, fame and like the, I, I mean, of course, I still am a fanboy of all these guys, right? Like, it's gonna be crazy competing against them. But I, I knew there was a reason that they were successful. Because you know, the hardest workers, I said on a podcast last night, the hardest workers get the luckiest when it yeah. comes to sponsors, fishing, all of it. And so that's something I'm really trying to like bring with me um, on the Elite Series is that just the work ethic off the water. And that'll translate into success on the water. I, you know, having the partnerships and the backing to be less stressed financially on the water brings, you know, more success when you're out there fishing. When did this whole goal, when, you know, what age were you when you said, man, I need to try fish for a living. This is something I got to do. Yeah. So 12 years old was when I joined Bassmaster as a life member. But, you know, that doesn't mean you want to take it into your, you know, do it for a living. I would say when I graduated college, um, I had I already kind of got myself involved locally in the fishing industry, like working for Douglas Rods, they're a sponsor of mine, worked for them, um, ran, t- started a tournament trail that they ended up uh, purchasing. And I still kind of run that a little, you know, on the back end. Um, and that's when I knew I was like, you know what, I think I'm going to try, give it a shot. I've got enough partnerships where I could, you know, get some m- money to jump into the opens, but then also pair it with a job. Uh, so it was like eight, it was like probably 20, 20, 
20 years old was when I was like, I think I can try to do this and like get after it. And I didn't just jump in right into the opens. I knew I needed to like do my due diligence and like work prior to that to set it up to where, what if I did make it my first year? Like I, I needed to know that I was going to be like financially secure and have the backing on the elites because you, you know, that's why you guys went, that's why Bassmaster went to all nine uh, to qualify. Honestly, um, I think we haven't even got through the first year of it, but I, I already think, you know, through these conversations, having nine, you get people that are so much more prepared. I mean, you've been tested geographically, financially. If you could hang with those nine, I mean, you know, um, I mean, it's just the three you what was happening in the past, I think. And and some people want to put it out there that Bass did that to give people from MLF a route back. That is not the the drive from everything I've heard was because they don't want to fire. Th there was young pros that would make it through three events. And those pros could have gone on to be some of the best pros ever, but they get, got there too quick. They got chewed up, spit out and, and probably never recovered to, to take another shot at it. Or it's pretty rare. Right. Tell, tell me about yourself as an angler, because um, I mean, some folks would want to make people believe that, Without electronics, you guys are never going to catch a bass. <laughs> right, right. No, I've heard that quite a bit. And uh, it's funny. I was actually talking on on um, uh, Bass University yesterday about this. Like my favorite type of fishing and how I grew up fishing and how I did really well in New York is shallow water, flipping a jig and sight fishing for largemouth. That is what I like to do. That's how I like to fish. Now... I wish I could do more of it in the open. I wish I could have done more of it in the opens. I truly do. But it just, it, the opens didn't set up for that style of fishing this year. I, I just don't think it did. Now I could see some potential in the elites next year for some really good shallow water, shallow water fishing. And I'm excited for that because that's how I like to fish. I always have, I think a lot of guys, that's how they start fast fishing. You're beating the bank. You're, you're walking along the bank. Like I want to be able to pick apart uh, you know, uh, an isolated piece of structure on the bank or grass or where I'm, you know, using more of my eyes and looking at, you know, what's around me rather than right down at a screen. Cause don't get me wrong. Like I like using live scope, but it gets frustrating and annoying to be looking down like this all the time. Like, it's not that like, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. But when you feel like you're doing it over and over and over, and you feel like you need to do that to compete. Sometimes it can get a little bit, re you know, redundant, like just constantly looking down. So contrary to everyone's belief, like I, I think I'm a better shallow water fisherman than I am a live scoper. I, I really do, but we'll, that'll, we'll see. <laughs> cause, cause that hasn't, I haven't really been able to showcase that as much as I'd like. Um, but you know, New York has some of the best site, yeah. like, of water large mouth there is you know so that's that's how i grew up all right all right i like this i like learning about you but here yeah. i'm going to give you the opportunity to talk about somebody else because you really find the truth out you qualified with eight other anglers tell me something about one of them that they probably don't want you to tell me right now Ooh. Um, now remember they're going to get a shot back at you so don't i know hold back. i know Okay, I can tell you something. <laughs> I, I, you know what? It's more of a precaution. Do not go in Tyler Williams' uh, uh, camper. Just don't go in there because holy smokes, he needs to do some cleaning in that thing, okay? Like big time. <laughs> I'm going to get him a bottle of um, like aerosol like spray for it for anything i'm gonna get them some cleaning tools because it's uh it's touchy in there it's nasty <laughs> yeah nasty. yeah just i and look i get it right we're traveling like totally cool but that is one thing that i sure i mean that's not that exciting but that's just that is a fact i, I feel like he's gonna get you back worse like i've, I've <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I got, I got to be careful about what, what I throw out there because <laughs> there's some, uh, yeah. 
I won't go any further. All right. All right. Well, we can dig deeper into that in the future when we have you on for yeah. a full episode. Yeah. But... Yeah. I need a full episode. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Last thing I have for you, we started at horrible timing, really started this last week on last week's show where we asked the guest of the show without knowing who the next guest is to ask a random question. And we call it answer a question. You get to ask a question. So you're going to get to ask a question. Really bad timing on my behalf because we have nine guests this week. So we're going to have to pick the best one. But the question was asked by Mr. David Fritz, Bass Fishing Hall of Famer. And his question was, have you ever lied? about a lure you're using no come on like Never. two bass like two bass masters is that what you're saying what, just to, to anyone to your, to your oh, grandparents, oh 100 100 your... <laughs> oh okay 100 percent. yeah yeah i told everyone back in the day that I, I was doing really well on one lake and i told everyone i was using a hair jig um and i didn't i've never i never picked up a hair jig in my life so yes i've lied quite quite a few times quite yeah, a few I, times I, yeah. i'd say that's telling the truth yeah that that yes as far as like on like what i'm throwing in a in a bass master tournament i have not lied because every time it's been like on live so you, yeah. you can't really lie but yes yes i have <laughs> <laughs> well I thank you for your honesty and thank you for doing this and dude i'm looking forward to hanging out with you uh all next year and for many years to come yeah, I'm super excited, Dave. Thanks for having me on. Ben Milliken, the whole idea behind this show was for me to to meet the rookies, but I feel like we've spent several hours of our time, of our life, talking to each other. So I, I know you pretty good, but thanks for doing this. Absolutely. Hey, Dave, nice to meet you. Good good to introduce myself. How's that? Am, am I saying it right? Milliken? Is that, is that correct? Whatever you want to call me. I, I go by a lot of things. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. What are some of your favorite of, things? I get called a lot of things, but I, I go by Ben Milliken, I suppose. Are you concerned that when the Elite Series starts, it will it will cut down your feuding online with several people? <laughs> um, hopefully, it just gives me uh, more ammunition uh, to, to kind of say, you know, I, I belong here. Hopefully, we'll see. Dude, I don't think anybody argues you belong here. What you did uh, is incredible. What all nine of you guys did is incredible. But they've told me a lot about them. But tell me what you think. Like, to be part of this rookie class, which is definitely one of the most talked about rookie classes we've ever had, good, bad, or indifferent. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's it's incredible uh, to see. You know, we, we've talked at nauseum about – the youth movement into the sport and how at 34 years old, I'm the oldest out of everybody. The only one over 30. Uh, that's, that's pretty crazy. Um, and it's definitely not to take away from any of the previous rookie classes. I mean, look what Sifuentes did last year, even though he's not a true rookie, but look at what Koya did last year. Never fished hardly in the United States gets five top tens. Um, and, and yeah, I, I'm not saying we're going to have that same kind of success, but when Bass changed the format for the Opens to all nine guys or all have to fish nine events to, to get those nine qualifiers, it definitely made it a lot more um, encompassing um, yeah. and uh, more of the guys that want to fish professionally have the means to fish professionally, and that's really specifically their goal. Um, they jumped into the nine Open events, and so – this is a culmination. Um, this this field is of those nine events, obviously, and um, I feel like we got nine very polished guys in there. So it's going to be a fun year. What is your goal for twenty twenty four? I get you know people have asked me that a lot. I honestly am not a goal oriented person. I don't like goals, um, which is kind of funny. I obviously wouldn't have entered the opens last year unless my goal was to qualify for the elite series. So I, I'm, I, I guess the biggest thing I would like to do is to qualify for the classic in 2025. Um, that's, I guess, one goal that I would have, but besides that, I just try to be the best I can be every single day because I know the process is a lot more important than just setting lofty expectations. So I focus on the, the day-to-day process. What about rookie of the year? And and if that is a goal, <laughs> who who are you most worried about in that night? I 
uh, honestly, like I feel like I just got my teeth kicked in by the entire field that qualified <laughs> for nine events. And so it's it would absolutely blow my mind to be able to win rookie of the year. Um, man, the person I'm most worried about, you'd have to say the two people that okay, first off, is Jordan Lee considered a rookie? No, no, no. He's got he can win the classic and be a rookie. Yeah, I was gonna say, but um you would have to definitely look at the two guys who dominated the entire year, which would be JT and John Garrett. Yeah. Both just, I mean, Trey had an amazing year as well, but those two guys specifically just didn't have bad events and caught them all around the country. And both are as, in my opinion, they're as good as anybody in the world right now. All right, let's get some breaking news. What is your rap going to be in 2024? You've asked me this every time, Dave, it's, it's not going to have any sponsors on it. Does that help? No. There's, it a, does. there's, a, yeah, actually, there's a clue. There's a hint. So it's gonna your boat's going to be covered in vinyl, but that's all it you're is. giving I me. I, I can't give you anything else, Dave. It'll be soon enough. I'm going to have it in a month. All right. All right. What, 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 um, what's your jersey going to look like? Similar to last year. Okay. Except more more required Bassmaster patches on it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a problem with said requirements? I mean, I no, feel I, like let's be honest. I, I feel like your whole career you're gonna kind of be that guy that's yeah. I mean, I'm on not, the inside, but on the outside uh, perpetually. Yeah, I'm not gonna be out fishing in my underwear per se, um, but. I think that I will try to push the limits of, of some things on where I, I understand the sport needs to go and where I think that I can personally, you know, with my background, with more of a marketing side of things coming from the YouTube world and, and the, the brand ownership world, um, I, I understand what, what moves the needle, what, what uh, helps sales, what drives people to get into the sport. I feel like um, a lot more than the um, traditional – let's throw logos on jerseys and boats idea. This, this billboard mentality that um, was gone about 25, 30 years ago. So I'm going to keep, uh, I'll keep pushing for that. I'm not going to try to ruffle too many feathers because I really truly love BASS and the opportunity I've been given. Um, so I've been a fan my entire life. So definitely no disrespect towards the organization or anybody that's been a part of it, but at the same time, I'm going to try to do my part to uh, help progress the, the the sport for the good of everybody. Is it true that you said no to a six-figure deal because they wanted you to run a rap? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? Why no? You're just... <laughs> because I I I feel like uh, just kind of standing up and and and, and putting that out there is going to pay off more in the future. It's a long-term play. And throughout my career on the YouTube side of things, I've seen where saying no is um, very, very powerful. And um, just by the principle of it, where I, I know things are going to go that direction to where brands are going to see how ridiculous it is to, to want to do that and want to wrap a boat um, and, and place your importance there. And so saying no was a, uh, a, a uh, stance I can take that um, I can afford it right now, but uh, hopefully in the future, it'll be something that comes to kind of fruition. Talk to me about the no goal thing. Is that your whole life? Like, because you will, I mean, you go to any motivational speech on earth and, and if you want to achieve the kind of success you've already achieved, people are like, well, write a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, all this sort of stuff, set some goals. Have you always been a non-goal orientated person? I don't know about always, but it's something I've really kind of focused on the last two or three years, I guess, because I, I used to kind of have these goals with my career. And I realized that every time I got to something that was like a tangible goal, like I hope to get this many followers um, by this date. Um, if I make it to 100,000 followers, then that'll mean this. If I can start making $5,000 a month from fishing, then that's amazing. And I'll be set. If I can get on with this brand or this group of people, then, um, then I'll have made it. And what I started to realize was when you get to those, those, uh, just those accolades that you in those milestones, it's exciting, but 
it never really means much because the next day or that day, you're just like, well, I have to keep doing this to keep it all going. And so I realized how much more important it is to grind and focus on my daily stuff because without me going out yesterday and today and tomorrow and the next day and tightening up my tackle, getting boat deal stuff done, getting my electronics wrapped up, just constantly learning and staying dialed in. I'm not going to be able to go out at Toledo Bend that first event and um, have the level of success that's possible as opposed to me just being like, my goal is to win at Toledo Bend this year. My goal is to be rookie of the year. Well, that doesn't mean anything. That's just words. That's just writing something down that you're going to have to work for anyways. So I don't really set those. I just do what I can every day. I like that. Dude, you're the only person. I mean, I've always kind of been the anti five-year plan guy just because in my head, it's, I mean, what you do today is more important to get to that five-year plan than it is. And I also think that, like, my goals are so ridiculous in life. Like, I mean, even just being from Canada, being like, oh, I want to be the Bassmaster MC one day. You write that down on a piece of paper, and you're going to think you're – people are going to tell you you're foolish. Like, I think if you set – you know what I mean? Just push exactly. as far as you can and – Dude, you are doing that. I'm I am very excited about watching what happens with you on the Elite Series. It's it's going to be fun. Me too. I'm just trying to get to the mindset where um I'm just can be, you know, excited to be there and happy to be there um as opposed to like putting a lot of pressure on myself to get some type of finish and that that just kind of all goes along with uh, the the everyday grind and just trying to have gratitude for for the opportunity. All right, last question, and it was asked by David Fritz without even knowing who he was asking it to. The question is, have you ever lied about a lure you caught a bass on? Yes, but it was more so, it's not like standing up on an open stage after I won the tournament or something. It's more like, you know, someone pulled up to me in a local derb like, hey, you catch them on the crankbait? And I'm like, yep catching them cranking or something of that nature a lot more so than just, you know, blatantly going out and making an article or, or, or something uh, to, to push people towards something to financially, you know, sell more product. I think that's the right answer. If anybody, I, nobody yet has answered this. No. Um, and if anybody <laughs> does, I'll be like, you are a liar. hundred <laughs> percent. Ben Milliken. Thank you very much. I look forward to hanging out with you all year long. Can't wait, Dave. I appreciate it. This is the awkward part at the end of the podcast. Logan Parks, it's great to have you on the Bassmaster Elite Series, but it's it's not all good times. Right now, we are well, we're joining you just shortly after having a... Well, a lot of people go deer hunting this time of year, but you did it with your vehicle. Yeah, that, uh, that Toyota Tundra, it's a, it's a <laughs> deer killer for sure, especially when you have a steel bumper on the front of it. <laughs> But well, uh, Peter yeah, PETA thinks we runway. suck right now. PETA is picketing the show <laughs> by the second. But obviously, unintentional. What happened? Yeah, so I was on my way home last night. I was driving through Georgia. I was almost almost home, uh, about two hours away. And uh, deer on your way out. home from the the weekend championship, right? Yeah, the Bassmaster Team Championship. We just had that down there at Harris Chain. Sucked there. Um, Suck there, <laughs> didn't catch them, had eight pounds a day. But uh, to make that even worse, I was on the way home and uh, smoked a buck. I seen some movement out of the corner of my eye, and he ran out right in front of me, and I didn't even have time to break. Um, and it just hit just perfectly where it just smashed my radiator in. Luckily, the one lucky thing was I was right by a truck stop, so I was able to just kind of pull in there and, you know, be able to get things situated. And then my dad – came and picked me up in the boat up and uh mr parks how are you sorry 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 hey i'm good so uh (laughs) we got home at like 3 a.m um and then now we're waiting on the tow truck here in auburn had to pay quite a hefty fee to get that truck towed two hours down the road up here to auburn from georgia but uh they're supposed to be here any minute so we can get everything kind of kind of fixed and obviously you know i've got a get it rewrapped so we got to get it taken care of so i can get it wrapped in time for the for the first tournament all right well let's let's not let's not let this deer rain i mean sorry for the deer i mean his day got a lot worse than anybody but (laughs) aside from this how excited are you i mean 
you made it. You made it through the gauntlet, and uh, you're an elite series pro. Man, I'm stoked. I'm. I couldn't be happier to, you know, kind of realize a long time dream of mine. It's been something I've thought about ever since I was a, a young kid watching, you know, Bill Dance and watching just Bassmaster on TV with my granddad. And I, uh, it still doesn't seem real, and I don't think it will until. I'll get to walk across the stage with you in February. Uh, Mr. Parks, how, how do you feel? Are you, are you, let give your dad a little screen time. Are you proud of your boy? <laughs> oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? Yes. Yeah, so proud. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's been a long journey from high school through college to through all the opens for two seasons. And then finally, this is it. So uh, we had COVID couldn't even be down there to celebrate with him. Well, I, I'm, you're feeling good now. Oh, absolutely. Okay, well, I, I want to take this opportunity to apologize about some of the foul language I used when I first <laughs> talked to your son and had no idea that you were sitting in the passenger seat. <laughs> I've heard worse. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you... He's been around me when I lost a five-pounder before. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Elite Series, what is your biggest worry going into this season? Biggest worry? going into the season like you must have nerves like first day of the job like people are like oh, i hope i don't do this or what like what what is the moment that you're like is there one well i would say after this weekend at the harris chain my <laughs> biggest worry is going back to the harris chain <laughs> <laughs> and deer <laughs> yeah and deer yeah very worried about deer also <laughs> I, I saw this thing online. They have a deer whistle. I might look into one of those posts to keep them away from your truck. <laughs> right, be honest. This is just an elaborate sponsor plug that you set up for the deer whistle deal <laughs> that you're going to release at the Bassmaster Classic, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's like a hydro wave for your truck. <laughs> yeah, it's genius. It's genius. So let for, for people that don't know you, I mean, that you've been on the show before. Congratulations on a great tournament. Nothing but great uh, reviews for everything you did for high school and college fishing. But let's let's get to know you a little bit. How old? I'm 25. In love, I know that. Smoking hot fiance. <laughs> Sorry, oh, yeah. Dad. We're, uh, we're excited to get married this this upcoming year. Got a lot of big things, man. Fishing the elites, getting married. It's uh, besides that, deer life is pretty good, Dave. I can't complain and. Uh, I'm I'm very blessed to have such awesome support, you know, between my my dad, my mom, and and Caitlin. She's awesome. Out uh, of the elite series anglers, you're going to be competing against, and you competed against a lot of them in the opens and a lot of tournaments that you fish. Um, what what uh, who's the one that you're like, maybe going to be a little nervous around? Hmm. I don't know if. I, I would say nervous, but like I'm pretty fired up to compete against Jordan again. That's uh, that's pretty cool. I, I actually sent him a text of uh, a couple weeks back when he announced because uh, he was at Auburn when I when I started the high school fishing team at Auburn High School, and uh, he actually took me and the kid that started the fishing team took us pond fishing. He asked us if we knew any good ponds, and so we went to a pond down the street and like we wrecked them, dude. Like first time he'd ever like he, we'd ever seen a drop shot and wow. we we're just like launching the drop shot in the middle of the pond like we caught fives and sixes and sevens it was insane and so it's kind of crazy to see that come full circle from when he was in college and when I started the high school team to now you know competing on a professional level together against each other um I'm, I'm really looking forward to to that yeah that'll be cool that that i, I... Rumor is it that he said he's not coming back to the Elite Series till you make it, and that's why he's coming back <laughs> to the Elite Series. Yeah, he, yeah, that must have been a factor in his decision making. <laughs> Tell me about the nine qualifiers. We've had them all on here. They all, you know, lie to me to my face, but uh, give me some dirt on one of them. Anyone. Hmm. And remember, they could have give dirt on you, so defend yourself, young man. Dang. That's what would have been a good question to prepare for. <laughs> um, hmm. Preparation I is not this show's specialty. I don't know if I you're aware have, of that. I definitely have some some dirt on John, but I don't know what he would want me to say and what he wouldn't want me to say, you know? 
Okay, well, just uh, give me a little sneaky side dirt, not the. Hmm. I mean, your dad's in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Or right, actually, no, you know what? You're not going to do a good job. I, I'm not giving you this opportunity. Mr. Parks, <laughs> All right. Mr. Parks, can can I have Mr. Parks on the phone? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Parks, do you, give me some dirt on your boy. I mean, just come up. Look, I mean, he wasn't always this star spangled. What, what? Tell me the day that you were like, oh boy, this child may live with us forever. Ah, uh, the day he was born. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, no, I have no, I have no dirt on him. He's actually a pretty good kid. Was try to be. Now he's a young man. <laughs> now he's, are you excited about these these upcoming nuptials? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It, Caitlin's a wonderful girl, so we're very excited. She is a wonderful girl. I've met her, and she's very nice. Uh, any chance you guys would like me to marry you? <laughs> Hank said the same thing. Yeah. He said he was ordained. Well, well, oh, Hank are... might really be ordained. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably more suited to be the bartender. So if you need you, one of those, you could, you could come and do the uh, do the announcing of when they do the the couples. You know, I don't know what that's called when the 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 introduction of the couples. I would imagine. Yeah, like the groomsmen and the bridesmaids when they walk in. You could be like. Next up, we got John Garden. <laughs> you be you would be shocked yeah. at how many of those I already do. The amount of I mean, I don't physically ever go and do them, but the amount of people that weirdly enough have contacted me. I mean, if I was smarter, I'd be on uh, what's it called? What's it? Cameo, and I'd make twenty five dollars or whatever for each one. But I don't. I just send them to people. And me talking about this in this podcast is probably going to make me have to do more of them. So this is a horrible topic. <laughs> but dude, it's gonna be awesome to have you on the Elite Series. Um, we got to know a lot about each other here today. Uh, dear obstacles, but but my favorite part w was meeting your dad. Uh, dad, are we gonna <laughs> are we gonna see you on the Elite Series? Are you gonna come to some events? Well, you know, we argue about this a lot, but <laughs> I, I've always tell everybody I, I've taught him everything he knows about fishing. So I, I would hate to compete against him and win. No, no, I didn't mean to fish, Dad. I meant to cheer on your son. Like, I didn't mean to get in the game. I mean, that's, wow. I mean, if you ask Archie Manning, what what did you think, Peyton? Well, I'm going to whoop his butt. I don't mean compete against your son. I mean, be a soccer dad and sit in a chair and cheer him on. Will we see you then? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We do all that. Yeah, okay. My wife and I, we'll, we'll, we'll be at several of these events. Yeah, um, he's retired now, so he he doesn't have anything to do except you know work on my truck when I hit deer and stuff like that. <laughs> Come pick me up at three in the morning. <laughs> well, that's a dad's dream right there. Well, uh, I look forward to meeting you in person. I'll be the sweaty guy on stage. <laughs> well, he has many talents. He's uh, uh oh, uh -oh you screwed up the whole. This was so professional until this happened. Oh wow. Oh no. It is hard to soar like an eagle. When you are surrounded by turkeys. <laughs> I mean, look at this. I mean. You got it? Does it look normal to you? I mean, people. There, there you're back. <laughs> there it is. People think that all of you nine qualifiers are 20-year-old geeks that don't even know how to cast and just catch them because of forward-facing sonar. But you just proved. <laughs> just because you can <laughs> run forward-facing sonar doesn't mean you're electronically sound. Yeah, I may not be able to operate a phone, however. <laughs> I gotta go. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, the truck, truck is said. here. Hey, so. let, let's let's end it. That's bye, perfect. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye Mr. Yeah. Parks. Um, hey, Show go outside. Let's see this truck pulling hey, up. You want to see and... the deer hair? Oh, yeah. Could you please? <laughs> you want to see you... the deer hair on the truck? Oh, that would just be gifted. <laughs> That's the perfect stuff. Here, let's see it. I mean, I think some of our viewers will get excited about some deer hair. Where are you going? All right, look, I hit I I hit it going so hard. Here it is on the tow truck. Oh, I hit oh, it going okay. so hard. Oh, you're then I've got hair in oh between my... the rim and the tire. Goodness, that would make yeah. a perfect perfect jig. <laughs> yeah, so I crunched my radiator up pretty good, but wow, we got it here at uh, University Tire and Auto, so we're gonna get it fixed up, and uh, we'll see you in February. All right, all right. Will, will you will you give me a tuft of that hair and tie a jig or something for me? <laughs> yeah, I need to tie a hair jig with it. It'd be good luck. Well, yeah, I don't. I'm not worried about your luck. I'd like you to make it for me. 
<laughs> it's the giving well, season. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll tie one up for you, Dave, and send it to you for Christmas. I, I will be counting the days. Wesley Gore, good to meet you, and welcome to the Bassmaster Elite Series. Yeah, man. I didn't know if I'd ever actually get to talk to you like this in person, or I guess through a camera, or even just have a direct conversation with you. It's pretty cool. Well, that did. Let's hope you feel that way a year from now. I mean, it, it always starts good, but then it goes downhill. Um, I'm excited to have you on the Elite Series. I'm excited to have you here on the show. But who in the world is Wesley Gore? Uh, I, I'm just a 23-year-old, uh, I guess you could say college dropout that just loves to fish. Uh, I don't, I know how to do a lot of other things, but I just love fishing. So that's all I've done since I was a probably 11 or 12. Uh, I started then, and from there on out, I've just constantly just stayed at it. Uh, I fish every weekend, four or five days a week, and how the whole dream's been to be on the Bassmaster. So it's, I'm glad to see it actually come to you. So it's a pretty neat deal. So this started, your dream started when you were 12? Uh, I would say that's when it actually started playing out. Uh, my parents got me a boat. I've, I've, I've watched the Bassmaster since I was young young uh I, I grew up outdoors whether it's fishing or hunting so it's pretty neat to actually be in the industry uh it was a far shot to become a professional fisherman but uh i guess we made it happen so when you say your parents got you a boat what, what kind of boat are we talking because with the narrative that is out there in the world people right now are envisioning uh, you <laughs> a state-of-the-art bass boat uh, uh, no, with a no, driver our- to pull it for you uh, the first boat my uh, my parents ever got me was a uh, 17 foot Ranger aluminum uh, with no graphs. It was just just something to get from point A to point B and back. Uh, just being out on the water, uh, we fished all that for probably two years, and then I started fishing. I think high school stuff at 14, and we uh, upgraded. We got an 18 foot Ranger, and I remember it was the coolest thing ever. We got the uh, like a 1098 unit on the da- at the dash and like a 998 at the uh, at the up front it was just it was amazing to have that stuff and out thought as is antiques or it's not even made anymore so it's it's pretty cool to see how it's advanced but no it's not always been that way uh it was just as minimum as you could go by uh, no poles uh, we actually ended up buying poles later so it's pretty neat to see it. I, I did not start with all the fancy gadgets, that's for sure. Uh, and at times, I still don't use all the fancy gadgets, but they're awesome to have. They have uh, definitely changed the game. What about fishing is your favorite part? Like what what if, when you when you close your eyes and say, "Man, th- this is why I want to do it." What is that exact moment? In terms of actually fishing professional, it's just the competition. But fishing itself. Uh, I've always had this inside thing with people back at home. I, I don't, I, I love to fish, obviously, like we all love to catch fish, but the biggest thing for me is figuring out fish. Once I figure it out, it's not as fun to go out there and catch them. I, I mean, I love to catch fish, but the whole game to me is figuring out what's going on. You know, like if I'm at home, I used to, if I wasn't on anything, I would fish every day till I figured it out. And then once I figured it out, I would just slack off. It's, it's crazy. It's, I just love the science behind it. Cracking the code. Yes, 100%. That's what I'm all about. Well, you're going you're to have a lot of codes to crack on the <laughs> Bassmaster Elite Series. In some ways, your job gets easier. I mean, there's 125 less anglers you're competing against. Um, but the anglers you're competing against are, are pretty stinking good. Yeah, it's crazy how many of them are actually local to where I live. Uh, you got Justin Hamner, you had Strassner. You got Will Davis. I mean, them are people that I fish against every weekend. Uh, so Dustin Connell, which he's on the other side of the tour. I mean, Russ Lane that's coming to the Opens this year. Those people are like common names that I fish against. And uh, just getting to hear, just talking to them, I actually had a pretty in-depth conversation with Hamner a few days ago. And I was telling him how excited I was to only be competing against 100 boats instead of 225, you know. I was like, dude, I've got so adjusted to being in a crowd that I don't know what it's like not to be in one. But he's like, they're going to catch them better. I'm like, well, I, I, sh- I expect them to with only 100 boats. So, you know, I'm interested to see how it plays out. Uh, we're going to act- try our best and swing at them, obviously. Uh, I'm excited about it. That's the least I can say. Do you think growing up in Alabama – fishing against some of the names that you just threw out. Do you think that prepares you a little better? Like when you look at some of the guys who come from less of a bass fishing hotbed, I mean, it's tough to stand out in Alabama, but when you get to the top, you've been tested. 
every person that I talk to in the industry and outside of it, I don't think they understand the atmosphere in Alabama, what fishing is. Uh, I've never been anywhere close to what it is here. I mean, we have tournaments seven days a week if you want to fish. Uh, there's people that live here that don't work, that they make enough money fishing tournaments, local stuff that they don't have to work. Uh, it's pretty awesome how big the uh, the local scene is here, uh, and it's very competitive. So, yes, it, it definitely prepares you. You get to see the, that there's always a group of guys that dominate throughout the year, and uh, you kind of see how they catch them and what they do, and you know what you got to do in the thing. In the, in the beginning, you know, I feel like several places you go, there's always local people, but, I mean, there's people, instead of showing up at, like, a, I feel like out-of-state local stuff, I could be completely wrong by saying this, you know, you have six or 10 boats that are going to catch them. There's 30 to 40 guys that put, when they put their boat in the water here, they're going to catch them. So it prepares you because it's, there's not really any not catching them going on. They're going to catch them always. Do you remember the fish or the moment when you were a kid that when it clicked in your head, that not that, Hey, I'm going to be a bass master one day, but just, that moment where you were like, oh, I, I'm going to do that again and again and again for the rest of my life. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I'll, I, I actually won't ever forget the moment that I actually, it wasn't the first fish to call. It was actually, we had got the 18 foot boat and we went to the dam down here below lay down at Mitchell. And we went down there one day and it, you know, a good day back then was, ah, oh, we caught a couple of fish. We went to the dam and we caught like 80. Wow current and uh it was big stripe the saltwaters and spotted bass a few largemouth and i remember from then on out i was like that's what i want to do every time i put the boat in the water i want to correct them well so, you're going to get an opportunity to do that a lot but there's going to be <laughs> a bunch of dudes trying to do that as well absolutely on the elite series who are you is there anybody you're intimidated no nah. like no, no not at all uh, the most intimidated I ever been was the first open I fished or one of the first opens. Uh, I still remember this to this day. Uh, I backed down the boat ramp at 19 on my local lake. Y'all, uh, there was a canceled open and y'all put it on lake. And uh, I just jumped in at 19 and I, I should have never, I was not prepared to do that, but I did. And I remember that day I backed down the ramp beside Greg Hackney. Oh no. And Jason Christie was on the other side. So I, wow. I at 19, that was probably the biggest uh, I'm not supposed to be here moment in my life. That was intimidating. But now I just I just go fishing, man. I don't really worry about who I'm around. If I'm going to catch them, I'm going to catch them. So that's the way that I kind of approach this year. I don't really worry about it. I'm going to fight the battle that I have and not worry about everything around me and see where the cards fall. What is your goal for 2024? Uh, I, I, I try to be realistic. Obviously, winning an event would be awesome. Uh, there is a couple or one in particular that I'm excited about. Probably my worst term of the year just because I'm excited. Uh, but uh, rookie of the year is the one thing that I think would be a pretty good goal in making the classic. I mean, that's the two that I have set. You know, winning something would be just be beyond my goals. So that would be extra for sure. You know, I just want to become sustained and show that I can compete with these guys. So which one, which one of the Alabama events are you looking yeah. forward to? Smith. See, that one blows me away because it's weird because most of the people, like I believe it or not, I try to do research with my job. So we're going to Smith and I started talking to some of my Alabama folks. And the general answer is, yeah, I don't fish there during the daytime, that time of year. Wow. It's it's going to be bumpy, uh, real bumpy. It's it's definitely got a lot of boats. The fishing's going to be not obviously the best because it's going to be hot and all that. But I'm just excited about that one. It, I, I do better at grinder tournaments, and I feel like that one's going to be that way. It's not going to be necessarily low weights, but it's going to be more mediocre weights and a grind event with the 15-inch limit then. It's going to be – it'll be different for sure. Okay, this is your opportunity to throw some of your brethren under the bus. I mean, you're going to be competing all year for Rookie of the Year with those same nine guys, um, plus our Bass Nation qualifier. Give me some dirt on one of them. I don't have any dirt, man. I I, I got to stay out of that loop. I just I just worry about me and go fishing. I I'll find dirt over the year over the year, I'm sure. But uh, right now, I just I'm going into it with a clear mind uh, for sure. I'm traveling with one of them this year, so. We'll get to work together and maybe do something as rookies. Uh, I actually didn't 
I'm not going to travel with somebody that's already on the tour. So, who are you traveling with? Kyle Patrick. Okay. Okay. So. You guys should you guys should do well together. He's a fun dude. Oh yeah, we uh we we'll work good together. Uh, we we're both not live scope uh dependent maybe that's a good word i think we can catch him without it too but uh it definitely enhances our abilities when you hear people say some of the stuff that you've probably heard this off season about this group of rookies you know like you would think that you guys don't have arms are unavailable to even <laughs> cast i mean you just look at a screen and will with the force the fish into your boat when you hear stuff like that does it bother you or do you even pay attention to that? I just laugh at it. I mean, uh, I, I've been around it and I've seen it. The same people that won 90% of the time, the people that won without it still win with it. So, I mean, it's, it, it just enhanced somebody that was already really good's ability to catch them more or better. Uh, I guess that's the way to put it. So that's the way I look at it. Uh, there's some people that wasn't necessarily at the top of the leaderboard that you, that it's allowed to catch fish. But it's definitely so much more advanced than what people think. It's not just you throw a lure at a dot and you really, man, it's five pounder. I mean, there's so much more that goes into it. So, so much more. Yeah, I, I wish it was that that I simple. Do. Trust me. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing more humiliating than looking at them and knowing, like, they're right there. I can tell exactly where they're at, but they still won't bite. Um, if you to compare yourself, angling wise i mean not saying you're 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 the same accomplishment wise obviously you're just starting your career but but your style of fishing who would you compare yourself to on the elite series now or in the past uh, pre live scope i was uh i'm actually very similar to jason christie i mean you give me a spinner bait and a jig and i'll go down the bank uh that's what a lot of people don't know uh, they got to see the live scope side of me uh but I'm not scared to go down the bank. I, I'm very comfortable with it. That's how I grew up fishing. So uh, you can put me in any element and I'm okay with it, you know. But I guess somebody that's more, I guess, suited what I'm like now is probably a Patrick Walters. He uh, he keeps both of them pretty honest, I feel like. And I actually know him pretty good. So he's a good dude and he's a really good fisherman, especially in sh up shallow and deep, whether it's looking at him or not looking at him, however you want to do it. Yeah, he's pretty good. He can catch him. <laughs> and so can Christy. Those are two good people to be like uh last question it's not even from me it's from david okay. fritz he asked this question not knowing who was going to answer it but the question is have you ever lied about a lure that you caught a bass on absolutely <laughs> still to this day <laughs> I, I, I found myself being more honest uh I, I actually will tell them what i caught them on but it's not exact uh you know everything now no matter what uh is pretty live scope oriented to an extent uh the opens actually whenever i made the top tens i was dead honest uh i just pretty much told them what i caught them on but in terms of at home a lot of people know that we catch them scoping but i adjust everything a little bit so i got to make them figure something out secrets have always been a big part of the sport <laughs> and and i'm happy to say i believe everybody i've talked to said yeah i've lied because if you didn't i'd be like you are lying exactly. right now <laughs> You definitely have called him in a lot. Wesley Gore, I look forward to having you on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Thanks for doing this, and uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, man. Thank you. I'm loving all these dudes so far, um, and, I, and I'm excited to have them all in the Elite Series. I'm not supposed to have favorites, but this next dude, Tyler Williams, um, kind of one of my favorites for, well, this reason. There are a lot of ways, really, not, it, the ways are limitless that you can get on this podcast, but this is an excellent way right here. This is, oh my gosh, I'm horrible at this. Let me start it. Okay, so this is from Bass University. My buddy, Pete. It's one of the YouTube kids. I didn't, my dad interview. fished, but we mostly like trout fished and ice fished and stuff like that. We never really like, there was no bass tournaments or anything. So when I started seeing them on YouTube, I got into it and then fished my first tournament and did really well. Like I went out, it was Dave Mercer's facts of fishing. He was in a, uh, he was fishing like a little pond and he had a jig and I was like, Oh, that looks fun. So I went out and I bought a Abu Garcia black max, like a cheap rod, some line and a jig. And the first cast I ever made, I caught a five pounder. That's Whoa. awesome. That That is the great number one. Thank you. Thank you. I knew somebody watched. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, um, 
see, I told you guys, you should have listened. He's on the Bassmaster Elite Series now. <laughs> uh, dude, thanks for the shout out. And uh, how does that feel? Just to, I mean, me and you started corresponding a little bit through the season. You hadn't made the Elite Series yet. You, you right. had won an open, um, which I thought was awesome. But you you were kind of skeptical on whether you made it, but you just saw it. Well, I'll just shut up. Tell me about how does it feel? <laughs> I don't know. It. I don't know how to explain it, to be honest with you. It's like kind of crazy how it happened. I don't think it's quite going to hit me until I get on that stage. <laughs> it um, it sounds pretty simple in that video, but but I watch you fish and I'm like, did, do you throw anything other than a jig? <laughs> I'll make him bite a jig one way or another. I really think so. I know some people were talking about this year that they use 20 different ways to catch fish. And I think I used four <laughs> throughout the season, just mostly a jig. <laughs> but, so you're, you're, you're going to be a jig guy. I mean, who, I, who, who in yesteryear would you compare? Like if you said, I fish like who? I don't know. I want to say like maybe a little bit of like I was watching some old Fritz videos and like when he was fell out of the boat a long time ago <laughs> and stuff like that. And I was like, I think that's me. I'm like the new school Fritz. <laughs> Something so, along those lines. Other than falling out of the boat, like it was that where the connection is the the the, the <laughs> ability to stay aboard. Well, he, he always throws his crankbait. I'm gonna always throw my jig. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Something along those lines. I'm like a new school jig fisherman, I guess. <laughs> You're from Maine. Are you and I, I mean, I'd be better at my job if I did some research. Are you the first qualifier for the Elite Series from Maine? Yeah, I am. Wow. It's, we've had the, one angler go to the Classic, and I'm the only one to go to the Elites. Wow. The, does that come with any kind of honorary key? or Have you been recognized, or does anybody even know? I, I think our community is pretty tight. So everybody knew about that fifth fish on day two at Harris. <laughs> they couldn't, I got so many texts and I have a pretty good support system at home. It's nice. How but, do you feel? How do you feel you're going to do in the Bassmaster Elite Series? It depends if they bite the jig or not. <laughs> I, I believe, so. I think, well, <laughs> can I go work hard and do my best? That's all I can ask for. Do you think you'll have to throw some other stuff? Like, are you prepared for that, or do you just have like a <laughs> hockey bag full of jigs? <laughs> I, I got usually in my boat. I have nothing in the center compartment, and I got some extra stuff in the back. If they better buy a jerk bait jig or a glide bait, <laughs> those are the three things I'm good at. <laughs> so, what other kind of things do you store in your boat? Ah, uh, just some tackle that never gets touched. Usually, <laughs> I, I was cleaning it out the other day, and I'm looking. I'm like. Why do I have like a deep 3700 series box full of crankbaits when I can't catch a fish on a crankbait? <laughs> I like, keep a couple, but lighten it up. Then my boat ran fast. I'm like, what? <laughs> do, you, do you have a bucket in your boat? Oh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, what do you use that bucket for? Emergencies. <laughs> It happens. It, it it does. It does. It happens to me a little more often than everybody else. But... Why do you have, do you have troubles in the lower units? I don't know. It's probably what I eat. I guess. What What do you like to eat? Like what's what's pre tournament night before the tournament? You can eat anything what you want. Let's order. I'll try to do something safe. I can, but then it turns out that that messes me up anyways. So I really don't know <laughs> everything. I think it's the nerves. <laughs> so you, like, is the bucket a daily thing for you or is it just, <laughs> no, no, not daily. So like <laughs> no. how many times a week? Uh, well, it depends if it's like St. Lawrence with those like 16 hour days, I probably once a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> usually right. I'm like, there's nothing nearby. <laughs> I'm yeah. not coordinated to hold it off the side. <laughs> no, that does that not work out good? Did you, did you try? Very, yeah, I'll end up in the water. <laughs> yeah, top heavy, I hear you. I hear yeah. you. <laughs> Bad knees too. <laughs> you don't even you don't wear shoes when you fish. Is that like no. a thing? Why? 
I thought it was normal. I mean, I like usually I'm sh it can be 40 degrees out and I'm shorts, no shoes. And everybody looks at me like I'm crazy. I don't know. Well, I thought it was. <laughs> so why would you have thought ever thought it was normal if people look at you like you're crazy? Because it's normal in Maine. <laughs> <laughs> It was my first open and everybody was, it was the James River and people were looking at me like, is this kid really in shorts right now? <laughs> and it just, I was comfortable. Yeah. You're leaving too far. You're leaving Maine soon, right? T tell me yeah. about your, what, like, what, what's your next few months looking like? It's boat rigging and pre-practice and hopefully trying to learn something. Maybe <laughs> get a few more tricks. You're hitting the road, and where are you heading? Uh, I'm going to head down to Grand Lake, and then go Grand Lake, Fork, and then Florida to 44 Tackle, get my boat wrapped, and then up to Georgia to the like Greenfish Tackle, and they do some rigging there, too, to get some graphs rigged up. So it's a lot of bouncing around. Split in a couple of sneaky sponsor plugs there, I see. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready. You're ready for the Elite Series. <laughs> It, what, what's something that nobody what what's something that the world i mean it's time to open up i mean you're going to be in elite. i mean it's kind of like being a politician all of a sudden yeah. people start digging stuff up on you so let's just have an airing of the grievances and and anything you want to get out about your past i don't really know i haven't i just fish most <laughs> of the time jt won't let me wear my shoes in his truck because they smell too bad what what about this camper of yours? I heard it doesn't smell good either. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody goes near the camper. <laughs> oh, it's a it's a one man like. Wh yeah, why is it so camper. bad? Why is it so I, bad? I didn't think it was that bad, but I say that about a lot of things, and people are like, "That's bad." <laughs> so you fish like David Fritz, and you <laughs> clean up like Matt Robertson. It sounds like. <laughs> I guess I'm a mix of everyone, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Who uh let's let's do a speed round. Let's let's really learn about you. Favorite movie. Right. Oh, dude, I haven't watched many movies, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> okay. Probably, How about I'm trying colors? to think of one. I can't even think of one. How about color? Like, do you have a favorite color? Uh probably blue. Blue. Why blue? I don't. My first boat was blue, and I think it kind of just stuck from there. When did you have your first boat? Uh, when I was my first good boat when I was like fifteen. I had some like little aluminums before that that weren't blue, but the first one that was like, "This is my boat." <laughs> so you had a boat bef before a vehicle. Yeah, my dad would. Uh, he'd like we'd wake up in the morning. He'd go drop me off at a boat launch, and then I'd call him to pick me up <laughs> when the afternoon came around. Nice. He, uh, used to do fence measures and he dropped me off at the boat ramps between fence measures. <laughs> we have a fence company at home. That's you, that was his YouTube days. Is is this all you've ever wanted to do? Yeah. <laughs> I just like fishing. It's I like fishing and I like competition, so I just have fun with it. Yeah. yeah. Who are you most nervous of of hanging out with on the Elite series? I don't know. That that's a good question. Who are you most excited to hang out with? I don't I'm not really sure. I haven't thought that far ahead. I've seen it like I like hanging out with Kenta. He's one of my favorites. Yeah. But I know him well from the opens too. <laughs> uh, that's a good answer. You could have picked me, but that's fine. Oh, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Whatever. You've <laughs> no, taken you've taken that. from my show what you can get, and now you're just a money hungry elite series pro. <laughs> How, how do you feel when you hear some of the ridiculous I don't remember a rookie class that has had more ridiculous claims put out you know what I mean like literally let's call a spade a spade there's a bunch of people on the internet that think that you guys are a bunch of video game playing geeks that don't spend any time in the outdoors and the more I talk to you guys <laughs> none of you spend a lot of time indoors <laughs> no I I have. I don't even watch movies. I just go fishing every time. No, I don't know. Seems like a good way to go about this. So you don't, you don't, you don't pay attention to that kind of stuff. Not too much. No, I just usually go fishing. 
The yeah. thing is, like, with all of what they think, I'm just out there dragging a jig. I have to find the spot to drag it somehow, though. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> it's like, I hear it's you. Throwing out a waypoint or throwing out whatever it is on live. <laughs> uh, it's it's just a weird time in this sport. It, it um, is. But I, I think you'll do good, dude. I think you got any love in your life? No, fishing, no. basically. No. <laughs> That, that doesn't girl- go well. Yeah, you, you had a girlfriend recently or no? No. No. I think that's them why girls. They got cooties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to catch fish. <laughs> well, that's exactly what you should do, dude. Because now <laughs> is no, I'm, and I, hey, find love in your life when you're ready for love. Love will sneak up on you. Um, but <laughs> we'll see. now is that like that's honestly the thing that nobody talks about in all seriousness. I know we're joking around, but the amount of work that you guys put in, not just, or will be putting in, you know, on the elite series, but the amount of work you put in to get here, like, right. How many days a year, how many days a year do you fish right now? Oh, I want to say it's weird because there's a lot of travel time mixed in. Like I got an extra day normally of that, but probably 260 ish in that ballpark. Wow. Sometimes it's for an hour, like I'll get hour trips, but most of the time it's daylight to dark. Like wow. even if it's a 16 hour day, I can thank JT for that. Cause I was being kind of lazy and he's like, dude, you got to fish like go. And he, he's works really, really, really hard. <laughs> yeah, he's a very little package, but very, I mean, I don't, I don't mean his package actually. I mean like <laughs> a small package. He's a small little. Like, yeah. Shit. Dude, we'll go in restaurants small and dude, he's able to he's... like, he can like go between all these people in these packed restaurants and I'm bouncing off people like, trying to get through. I'm like, come on, you guys, him and his dad, you both got to slow down. <laughs> You're a lineman, dude. He is a, he, he, he's a, he's a skinny wide receiver. One of those guys that yeah. you're like, how do you even make it in the league? I have no idea. He just fast ran for his life. Right. Um, <laughs> Well, I look forward to hanging out with you on the Bassmaster Elite Series. You know, I think uh, it's going to be fun if it, if it goes good. You know, you might be looking at the the main the main event, but but he's got to earn it first, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. give it to him. But I, I'd say main event, as in where he's from. I think we're going to have a lot of fun, dude. I think I, th- I, think, I think it'll be a good time. No, the Elite Series ready for you. I'm excited. I can't believe this still happened. <laughs> but... <laughs> Well, it's it's about to happen. It's about to get crazy. But, dude, I appreciate the shout out at the start of this. Oh, I forgot. You got to a- answer David Fritz's question. We have a new thing. We just started a week ago. It's very historic. It really? is answer a question, ask a question. Um, so David Fritz answered a question, and he got to ask a question. Didn't know who our next guest was going to be. Turns out I screwed it all up by inviting nine of you guys. <laughs> yeah. But here's the question. Have you ever lied about a lure that you used to catch a bass? Man, I always catch them on a jig. <laughs> you don't have to lie if you only throw one thing. Yeah. <laughs> what color? What color jig you like? PB and J. All right. All right. I like it. I like it. Specific trailer? Uh, flapping hog. Okay. That's a good one. It's a good yeah, one. Yeah, it does nothing. I can make it do anything, though. It's, I don't know. I've thrown it for six years now. It was like one of the first things I bought. <laughs> you seem to be like a creature of habit. You find something you like and. Yeah, I mean, it, it works. <laughs> I can't say it doesn't. I mean, there's some bad ones, but there's also some good ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some some good ones. Some very good ones. Good enough that you'll not only be fishing the Elite Series, but the Bassmaster Classic in 2024. And I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun, dude. I'm excited. I'm really That's... excited. All right. Anything else we didn't hit on? You got anything oh. else you want to unearth? No airing of the grievances? Not really. Within Every... 10 minutes, it's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. We'll dig deeper another time. I was gonna say there'll be other times. Let me do something crazy on like Toledo or something. And we'll All right. Do that. <laughs> All right. I, I feel like you you have layers. You're like onions. There's a lot yeah. of layers to you, and we're just starting to peel them back. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jeez. Robert G, welcome to the Bassmaster Elite Series. Thank you, Dave. I really appreciate that. 
Now, th- this is kind of me getting to know you guys and some viewers getting to know you guys. Who are you and how in the world? Like you, this was your first season fishing the Opens, correct? Yes, sir. I uh, I just graduated college this year, too. I was, I was fishing the college series for uh, the last five years, and this was my first first season in the Opens. So was your plan? I mean, obviously the plan was to qualify right away, right? For sure. Yeah, like, I uh, I mean, I didn't know I was going to do it, but I was optimistic. I knew the schedule fit my style of fishing, and I wasn't scared one bit at all about the season. So you went to college. What, what did you go to college for? What, what Other than the Elite Series, what was the goal? Um, or was that just to, to keep people happy? Yeah, I, I uh, went to college for uh, business, uh, agricultural business and econ. But um, I would say I, I missed a few classes for uh, bass fishing and the uh, college Bassmaster Open Series a lot for sure. How would you classify yourself as an angler if you if you had to compare your angling skill to a current Elite Series pro or a past pro? Who, who would you compare yourself to? Um, it's a good question. I would say I'm. Uh, I know. Probably like Buddy Gross, because, I mean, I'm from East Tennessee. Like, I fished Chickamauga and Fort Loudoun and Watts Bar a lot. Like, that's where I grew up, cut my teeth. So, something like that. Like, I like to fish offshore mainly on those bodies of water, and I like to uh, take that to new lakes as well. What what event are you looking most forward to on the 2024 Elites? Um, I'm really looking forward to the first two in Texas, even though – Last year, my worst finish in the Opens was Toledo Bend, but um, I, I really just missed the I missed the mark on that tournament and tried to force the shallow bite. But um, I'm really looking forward to those Wheeler and Smith Lake because I've both I've been to both of those lakes a few times before. I don't I don't know the Smith one's going to be interesting because I literally yeah. I've I've tried to do a little research on it and I I don't know anyone that fishes it during daylight hours at that time of year like it is going to be. Anything. Hardyville, USA, when we're there, right? It's going to be very similar to Lake of the Ozarks this past year in the Opens. Like, just wakeboard boats, cruiser boats, just waves everywhere. It's I kind of I like fishing in the summertime because it's uh, – you got to be very strategic. So that's something you're excited to do. Like Most yeah, people like look the, at that as a negative, but you, you're yeah, excited about it. Yeah, that's the one thing about me. I kind of – because – like I grew up fishing Fort Loudon and you know, like the classics have been there. It's very tough. Yeah. So I like the tough grinder, just grit tournaments. You know what I mean? How shocked were you to see Gussie win that with all smallmouth? People said it couldn't um, be done and especially done twice. Um, now I'm not very shocked, but back then, like at the, the very first time, um, he won the regular, just regular season elite event. I was very shocked. But now it's uh, it's it's opened up a new realm on those bodies of water, and there's going to be some really big bags of smallmouth weighed in. I believe this year out there, like upwards of 25 pounds, I would say, like they're getting bigger. Wow! And it's it's pretty cool to see. Like last week, two weeks ago, 23 and a half all smallmouth was weighed out there, and last week I weighed 20 pounds out there, three smallmouth. But it's getting you- they're getting bigger. That's incredible. Did you attend this past year's classic? Yes, I, I've attended all the classics from when Ott was there. I worked the, this last year's classic for uh, one of my sponsors. But yes, it's I haven't been able to go out on the water, which just kind of kind of bums me out since it's my home lake. But I noticed a lot of the areas where people fish on the camera. It's pretty popular areas. So when you were at this past year's classic, did you have any idea that next year I'm going to the elites? I mean, you hope, no, obviously, but not at all, because we had just fished one open and I did I did fairly well. Um I people were joking with me, like, oh, you did good, you're gonna make the elites. And I was like, oh, whatever. I still got eight more tournaments, but I guess I'm here now and I'm I'm excited. All right, let's learn a lot about you quick here. How old are you? I'm 24 years old. I'm fixing, I'll be 25 for the elites. I'm turning 25 in January. Are you a single guy or, or, or single, a, guy. single guy? Do mm-hmm. you think that's important for success on the elite series? 
Uh, in the opens, yes. How, I, how do you think the opens will can? What what can you take from your experience in the opens that you think uh, will help you in the elites? Uh, I would say um, just the stress level of like big tournaments like that because the opens and fishing against all the the big crowd like that is very very stressful yeah. and fishing against Greg Hackney and Rick Clun and Jordan Lee and Brandon Polnick is very stressful as well so I feel like it'll it really just taught me how to approach the tournament and my mental game will be just more calm and cool calm and collected which which, uh, which pro in the elite series are you currently the most intimidated by um if any probably jason christie it's a good one it's a good yeah. one he he can be intimidated at times He's, yeah i saw him at you fall oklahoma and i was like that was that was pretty wild to be fishing against christie in oklahoma it was pretty cool the eight other anglers that you competed or qualified with um, as well as as well as um, our Bass Nation qualifier, you guys are all going to be duking it out next year for Rookie of the Year. So it's not like you're going to shake that group that you've been running with this past year. But let's let's play Survivor. I'm sure you've watched the show. If you, I mean, there's no hard feelings in this, but if you had to vote somebody off the Elite Series of those eight other anglers, nine other anglers, who, who would you vote off and why? What do you mean? Like, like if you could get rid of any of them, like you could be like, Hey, just a hammer. Yeah. That, well, however, you, you don't like them. They're a hammer. However, whatever reason you want to get rid of them, that's all up to you. Uh, probably John Garrett. I mean, he's one of my good buddies that I've made, but like, he's just a freaking, he's the real deal. Like he's going to make noise early and quick. And I would, uh, just for me trying to win a or rookie of the year getting him out of there would help a lot. You know what I mean? Him and JT, they're, they're, uh, they're very, very good. And they're gonna, they're gonna make noise early. I believe. I think this entire class is going to make a lot of noise. You guys were tested so much on the nine and, and all of the different event. I, I just think that the, the year of in the past, when you may, if you won rookie of the year, you kind of, just made the classic and that was, you know, a rookie of the year season. And now we see, I mean, we had two rookies in the top 10 last year. Uh, sure. Do you believe this is one of the greatest rookie classes the elite series will ever see? Or can you even say that? Uh, I hope, I hope it is because I mean, looking back at the past opens, like angler of the year results, um, I looked at the total points for like the overall and I think six of us would have won Angler of the Year in all of the Opens, like wow. for total points. Like I would have won it by like 150 points last year and two years ago. And it's just crazy. I ended up in fourth, and I had like over 1,500 points, and it usually took like 1,300 to win the AOI. It's just truly unbelievable to look at look at it that way. Yeah, it's, it, it really is incredible. I mean, people tried to crunch a bunch of numbers and none of the numbers mattered at the end because nobody fell off. It seemed like, you know, that group started running and you would expect, okay, this angle will slip a little bit. Slipping was dropping a few spots, but still being in contention. Did that shock you? Um, Not really. I mean, I, I mean, I knew a few of the guys that are that are in the top nine with me, like Logan and John from fishing in college and uh we were we were pretty prepared for like an opens kind of nine tournament schedule just because of caught the college schedule we fished fishing all kinds of events all over the place um fishing against really big crowds like that and knowing how to manage your fish and manage crowds and how to practice in that big a crowd so it's kind of I feel like I, I kind of could see it like it, it didn't shock me to say the least well, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch, but I have one more question for you. And it was actually asked by David Fritz. He didn't know who he's asking it to, but I'm asking it to you. Have you ever lied about a bait you caught a bass on? Um, yeah, <laughs> for sure. You got to. I mean, every fisherman surely has, unless they're just the most honest person out there, but for sure. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the honest answer. I mean, I'm no one has said yet no yet. Everybody has agreed that yes, yes, I have lied. I mean, it's 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 part of the history of fishing. Mm-hmm. And dude, I look forward to having you on the Bassmaster Elite series. Oh, yeah. Um, look forward to it's going to be a fun year. The one and only Robert G. Thank you very much for having me. Am I am I saying it right, Robert G? Yeah, G G E E, just like the, the letter G. The original G. There we go. Yeah, I like G. it. The OG. Yes, sir. Craig McKinney, you are a Bassmaster Elite Series qualifier, and literally just a few months away from becoming an Elite Series pro officially. How old are you? I'm 18. Do you realize how bizarre that is? I tell you what, all, all I've come to a conclusion is to say I'm blessed. You know, it was it was kind of a snowball effect, and we let it keep on rolling. So we'll see what happens. I, I mean, I don't even know if if you're old enough to be on this show. To be honest, but <laughs> are you the youngest Elite Series qualifier? I should probably know this if I was better at my job. I I I think so. As of right now, I got there was a few of the bass guys that I was talking with and as of right now i am i think the other youngest was like 19 yeah bradley roy so yep he went on to win rookie of the year are you gonna do that there's a chance you know there's always a chance uh we're gonna try it i know it's gonna be a different food chain but um hey it's all good we're gonna step into it open arms you have fished a grand total of nine bassmaster events almost half Mm -hmm. of them four out of the nine almost half you have been in the top 10. Have you always been like, have, when did this all start for you? Absolutely. I want to say when I was 16, when I was 16 years old, it, like I said, it was just kind of a snowball effect. We had local BFLs and somebody's like, Hey, you need, why don't you hop in these? I'm like, well, dude, I, I mean, I don't know. That's like the local hammers, you know, it's like the, the guys it's like, beware you know and uh everything else like that so it was it was a big step for me it was i was kind of nervous you know and everybody had heard of me coming up through fishing the junior stuff and everything but to really fish as of me making the decisions you know um trying to make the decisions as me just running the boat well it was was a new step you know and we started and, and i think the first one i ever fished i ended up third and I was like, you know, like it kind of gives you that boost of confidence of anything of like, maybe I can compete with these guys. And man, I, I, that's the best word I can describe it, a snowball effect. And we went on, end up, I forget how many top tens we had that year. I ended up winning Angler of the Year. So I've been the youngest ever to win the Angler of the Year for the BFLs. And then we actually, the next year, we, we I think we top ten three of the five, or no, we won three of the five. And I made a top ten in the other ones. I step one and I'm one angle of the year again. And it was just, just unreal. You know, it was a feeling that I had never felt before and it was kind of overwhelming and kind of the Lord kind of pointed us in this direction. And I was starting to hear a lot of chatter about the EQs. It's a new format. Hear this, hear this. And all of a sudden I was like, would it be a, such a bad idea if we done that? And I talked to my mom and everything else like that. And it just kind of, it kind of done like this. The sponsors were for it. Everybody with me. And we just kind of chugged along. And like I said, the first one, I was really nervous, like crazy nervous. Because I was like looking at the field, boats everywhere. Everybody had like five graphs. Everybody had big graphs. I was like, oh, my goodness, you know. And I ended up 19th. And it was it was crazy. You know, it just kind of gave me that little bit of confidence. So it was, it's, it's been a crazy journey this year. What is your biggest worry going into this season, if you have any? You know, I've, I am a really, I try to be a really chill person. I try to, I try not to let too much bother me and any, I mean, that's anybody's go in the world, you know, it's, it's just how you handle things. Fishing's so mental um, in that aspect of things for me. Um, I, I feel like the biggest worry is trying not to listen to what other people are saying, you know, um, trying to kind of do your own thing. I guess, I mean, doc talk is everywhere. Doc talk will be everywhere um it's kind of part of it you know it's it's not that they're meaning to veer you on the right on a different path but sometimes it can happen you know sometimes it kind of just makes you wander and it gives you less confidence about the pattern you have going even though it might not be that good but you still got confidence in it and when you hear everything else it just starts to like slowly you might not notice it but it just slowly pulls you apart 
and little stuff here and there, even five minutes out the day, you're not focused because some guy said this, some guy said this, and you miss one bite at that tournament, it costs you, you know, and, and it, it can happen in multiple, multiple, multiple. So I feel like that's the biggest worry for me is not to let anybody get to me on, on what they got going and try to do my own thing, you know, and uh, basically take pieces from other people's puzzle and try to build my own. Dude, I don't feel like I, I'm looking at you and you look, you don't even look like you fit your truck, but you are incredibly polished. What did you do before two years ago <laughs> when you started focusing on becoming a professional angler? I tell you what, there wasn't much. I mean, hunting, that's what I'm doing right now. Actually, I'm on a, on some back road in Haskell, Texas right now. And we're hunting cranes and geese out here. You know, I was just kind of, I've always been, my, my dad, he owns a Western store. So he has a whole bunch of buddies at hunt. So basically I would just kind of hang out with them and try to basically take every piece of knowledge I can from, from an older guy and a wiser guy that's kind of been through it. Maybe he ain't on the best path, but there's always something that maybe you don't take his whole idea of how he looks at things, but just take a little pieces of here and there. And just kind of, like I said, just kind of go on your own path and try to build it and, and, people that stuff people respect so that's what i've been trying all right let, let's really learn about you real quick here because we don't have a lot of time because we've got all nine on here so favorite yes, movie sir. of all time probably top gun maverick dude the new one is oh it's good I, it's just it's got everything you know i like it have you uh have you seen the original or no i have i've okay. watched it i can't tell you how many times i've watched them both yes sir what year were you born oh five so you were literally born the I mean the that's when the Elite Series was coming together, 2006. So your lifespan is the Elite Series. How much yes, bass sir. history do you know outside of the Elite Series? Not a whole lot, you know. Uh, I uh, it's it's on me. I I should learn the history of everything and just kind of watch the videos, but man, I have I haven't been that informed on a lot of stuff, you know. Um that's about it really, just what's been going on. What about school? Do you go to school? Are you done with school? What What is the plan? Oh, I'm done with school. I was actually homeschooled. So basically, I think I went to a public school to eighth grade and everybody started like, you know, kind of getting their stuff going on because I think you get like nine days a year and that was like one trip. So it's like uh, it kind of hangs you. And so that's that's what kind of happened. Eighth grade, bang, just went straight to homeschooling and, and I got done last year. So it was, it was pretty good for me. So, like, it sounds like you're you're a young Ivan Drago. I don't know if that means anything to you, but he's the guy that Rocky fought that was literally bred to do this. Do you feel <laughs> you're that? You know, there's always something that you feel that you can always do better. So, I, I you know, I think of my guy, myself as a regular guy out there just trying to make a living like everybody else. So, and it just comes down to the end of the day. On It's basically like chess, you know whatever guy out there makes the right decisions that day is going to be on top. So I feel like everybody else has their days. Um, some might not be mine, but some we might make a right decision. What's your goal for your rookie season? Make the classic, you know, that's a pretty good, that's a, as of right now, just if I can make the classic and get the hang of things, you know, there's so it's, it's a different, like I said, it's a different food chain next year. I mean, I'm going to be sitting in a bag lamb and look over and merch Polonic and so forth and so forth. And, I mean, it's 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 gonna be crazy. So if I can just next year have a good year, um, just win enough, you know, to cut even, make a little bit here and there. Because they said I'm I'm young, I stay at home, I'm I'm not swinging crazy hard, and every one I can, I'm gonna try. But if I can this year kind of go these different places, learn how to learn quick, learn how to learn efficiently, anything on trying to find these bass and make the classic this next year, it would be that's 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 a shooting goal right now. Let Let's look long term when you're when you're the so old at 28 years old 10 years from now <laughs> in a dream world if your life works out exactly how it is who are you 10 years from now what is your life like i'll tell you what if i could have professional fishing absolutely and if i could just get basically my perfect life about 28 years old find me the right sponsors that i believe in they believe in me have the right group of people that hang around, you know, just that you get around yourself of sponsorship because that's everything in this business. You know, that's how everybody's going to make a living. And if I can get the right sponsors on, on my jersey and keep them and just roll on and teach a younger age group all the way up as much as people want to learn, um, that's that would be honestly my dream, you know, just be how I have somebody that uh, it's just kind of cool. Like I haven't had it much, but a little kid come up to me and he's like, 
you know, just at all. And, and we talked a lot and, and being able to just kind of hit it off with them is, is kind of awesome. So if I could just be able to do that and be a light for somebody else, I, I, that's yes, sir. What is a little kid to you? How old? Uh, that I, I probably, I'd say like t- 10, 10, you yeah. know, just where they, they, they get the gist and they can do it. And, and when you say something, they, they, they listen to it and they take it as I'd say then. Okay. Finally, I've got one last question for you. And, and this whole conversation has made me feel so unprofessional. I was a total <laughs> loser when I was 18 years old, clearly, but this is ask a question or answer a question, ask a question. The question was asked by David Fritz, last week's guest. He didn't know who our guest was going to be this week, and and he didn't know we had nine of them. But this is the question. Have you ever lied about a lure that you caught fish on? You know, that is a very, very tricky question. And they're always the same. I am. I'm, I'm a straight shooter. I am going to say yes. I feel like it's a, it's a very shady thing out there. Um, I feel like a lot of us, I mean, pushing product is everything, but being truthful is something that I, I take very hard and I have, you know, it's, it's one of them things where it's, it does happen. It does. Um, and, and that's just kind of the social media industry this, nowadays. And um, I do, I feel bad about that, but I have, I have, I really have. So. Okay. Well, I think if you answer anything other than yes to that, you are a liar in, in my opinion. I mean, every, whether you're lying to, Thousands of millions of people at Bassmaster, or you're lying to your fishing buddy. People have lied about lures that they caught yes, fish sir. on. But, dude, I have heard I a it's... lot about you. I have, you are a highly touted, like years before. I mean, I was hearing your name. And, man, if you back it up as much as you did in this interview, it's going to be a fun 2024. Well, oh, thank you, buddy. John Garrett already been to a Bassmaster Classic, and I kind of joked before we hit record, but I've been waiting on you, dude. Like, when you fished that Classic in 2017, everybody kind of left that event feeling like he's coming. But, boy, you have been tested to get to the Bassmaster Elite Series. Yeah, this has not been an easy road by any means. I've, you know, kind of been over this over – the past few months or since Harris chain, it's like I've been just that close, you know, for the past three or four years fishing the opens. And you begin to question, like, is it going to happen? Am I meant to fish the elites? Like, you know, it, you know, basically when everyone says your time, it's your time. And this year uh, it was my time. I caught fish that I normally don't just, you know, get a big bite every, every day of every tournament that normally just don't happen to me things just kind of came easy for once in my fishing career. Things kind of came easy this year, but man, it, uh, it felt good to finally get it done and to be fish only leads next year for sure. Talking to all the other qualifiers, there's, there's a bunch of dudes who are like, yeah, I, I fished nine tournaments and I qualified. Does that kind of make you want to like swat them across the head? Just, just a tiny bit. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and one of those people, it wasn't this year as Jay. Yeah, Jay's had a, a great year, or, you know, great, great career, short career already. But he fished the, the three tournaments in the Central Division uh, a couple years ago, and he jumped in and knocked me out by a tiebreaker, him and Joseph Webster. And I looked at Jay. I clicked on his tournament resume or, you know, at Bass, the little, you know, blog thing there, and he fished three Opens. Yeah, I was like, oh, my gosh, man. I wish it was that easy for me. So, um, But, yeah, for sure. But some of those guys just get in and have a great run right off the bat. So, As in Jay, you're talking about Jay Shakurat, correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and I've talked about it a bunch of times. I remember having the conversation with his parents at the first takeoff of, of his Elite Series career, and they're like, we don't know if he's ready. We just, You know, he just wanted to, and he made it, but you can't. You know, he's his dad, who obviously has, you know, a very storied history and as a walleye pro, was like, <clears throat> we just figured we'd give it a shot because, I mean, it might take five more years to make it. Well, clearly he was ready. Um, and I think oh, you are too, yeah. dude. I mean, if, does it mean anything to you that in unison with all the qualifiers that I've talked to, 
And, you know, they talk nicely about everybody, but they all, when I said, who are you most worried about for rookie of the year next year? Your name is the first name I hear from all of them. <laughs> they know I'll rough them up if they don't say that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Off the water. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's pretty cool. But um, I guess out of the group that made it this year, clearly I, I've been on the Opens the longest and maybe a little more history and experience of that that kind of fishing. So, um, But those guys, man, they, they might be – a little more scary on their end. They just jumped right in and started whooping tail and made it right off the bat. So it goes both ways. That's a great point. Do you think the fact that you have been tested, the fact that that old quote, you got to pay your dues. I, I don't know what that means because there's people who, yeah. who, but you definitely have gone through that. Do you think in your heart, do you feel like you're more prepared for this than you would have been? remove all those guys if you had a qualified the first try first time you tried yeah i think um one of those deals is like i used to get so nervous and worry myself to death start popping gray hairs out before every blast off and during practice and now i just kind of show up and I don't really feel – I mean, I'm excited, more excited to get the day going than I am nervous. I feel like that the past, you know, three or four years that has kind of just eased off on me. And I don't feel like – you know, you always feel a little pressure, but I just don't feel like I have a ton of pressure on my shoulders that I did in the past years. And um, each year I've kind of learned what have I done wrong, mainly in practice. Like how do I make my practice better? How do I prepare for this tournament better? And this year or the end of last year, I kind of shifted the way I was fishing and did it all year this year. So hopefully just kind of learning as my fishing career goes on, um, on how I like to fish and what I like to do on the water, help me get some fish in the boat. That's so weird. You say that because exact opposite impression I got from watching you at the classic and everything. I'm like, this dude is so buttoned down. And so collected, but so obviously the outside maybe didn't match what was going on in your head at that time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, of course, everybody knows, I mean, fishing the open is just not super lucrative. I mean, it's not like just an easy way to make a living by any means. And I got a wife and a kid. So, I mean, when I go out and fish these tournaments, I was feeling pressure. Like, man, not only do I have to catch fish to make points, like I need to make some money, like, got to make it got to make it happen and this year i just kind of like look i'm just gonna go out and go fishing hard do what i do um like i said change my practice a little bit but yeah in the past i did you know i, I i'd say maybe i contained it pretty well but yeah i would feel a good bit of pressure on the water you you mentioned it and it is one of the things that sets you aside i mean you're one of the few rookies who is actually married actually I talked to several of our rookies. I don't know if they've ever even had a girlfriend, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't, honestly. <laughs> yeah. No, but you got guys like JT and Trey. And I mean, Ben does it for a job. He's got a family, you know, but you got some of these guys, they fish more than anybody I've even heard of fishing. They're on the water so much. And I used, when I was in college, I would fish literally all the time except like the one class I went to every month. Um, but now I rarely get a fish when I'm home because I'm just so busy at, at the house. And I look at it because I'm like, man, they're staying on top of everything. I wish I could be on the water as much as they are. Um, but yeah, it makes a difference for sure. Uh, they, they probably wish that they kn knew what a girl's lips tasted like. <laughs> <laughs> they might, i can tell them that for sure yeah um talk to me about bethel i'm a, i'm amazed by the, bethel is if not the powerhouse it's it's one of them when it comes to the collegiate program what happens at bethel why is there so many incredible anglers you know that have gone on to amazing things that has come from bethel what happens there what's there I can't talk about it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I mean, back when 2014 through 2016, 
even before then, that's kind of when, you know, us like KJ and Cody and Will Davis and all them people come through. They were one of the only teams that off only schools that offered a scholarship at that time. Yeah. So they would reach out to pretty much whoever they wanted to reach out to. And like, yeah, we're going to go to where we got an offer to go to fish. And Kentucky Lake was at the end of its heyday. So we're like, man, get to go to school, drive down the road, go catch a bunch of big fish. I mean, you couldn't beat it. You really couldn't. And then we all kind of came together from different parts of the country. You know, Cole Floyd's from Ohio River, KJ, North Carolina, Cody's from the Ozarks, and there's a whole lot of other people. And we all lived in the same houses, and we went fishing together, and we learned so much from each other. Um, We would go to different bodies of water, break them down like that. I mean, you put four or five good boats on the water that have different fishing strengths, Man, we just absorbed so much information off each other. It it really was where I learned almost everything that I do on the water was at Bethel from everybody. And as you know, when you get around better anglers, you become a better angler. You learn techniques. You understand how people think. And that's just kind of what was going on in that time frame at Bethel was a, a bunch of good anglers coming together and sharing thoughts with each other. Which is also – <clears throat> so rare in fishing like it, it previous to the whole collegiate expansion and everything that's happened i mean fish in the opens you have your people you run with and and maybe you talk to here and there but you don't have that unobstructed just honesty of like somebody showing you this is the technique that i use is exactly how i do it i mean and i think that's I think that's the big, I mean, finally fishing is a coachable thing, you know, where you can learn what, I mean, in the past you learned what you were doing right or wrong because whether you lost a fish or, or caught the fish, which isn't always the right answer. Yeah, for sure. I mean, now, you know, we got Bass Live, so we get to see visually what people are doing right then. But before Bass Live, we got 45 minute clips of the highlights for the elite tournaments. And didn't really learn that much. I mean, yeah, John Murray caught one on a 5XD on Toledo Bend. You don't know a whole lot about what he's actually doing, but at Bass Live, you can learn that now. But we were learning from each other at Bethel. We really were. And then even to the extent of where exactly we're catching those fish, maybe maybe not during the tournament, but right after the tournament. Like, hey, Cody, where'd you whack him this weekend? And he pointed to me like, ah, right there. That's in my memory bank. I know what, what to look for for stuff like that now. So, a lot of information got learned that couple of years there for sure. One of the negatives about this year's rookie class, and I hate to bring it up, but I, 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 it's out there. I mean, there is a bunch of people, not a bunch. There's a small group, but it seems to have become a narrative of a bunch of people that want to say, these are young kids who don't even know how to cast. They literally, if it wasn't for forward face and sonar, they wouldn't catch up. You qualified for a Bassmaster Classic before forward facing sonar was even a thing does that bother you when you hear stuff like that or does that just motivate you <clears throat> i honestly don't care be <laughs> like if if i hear someone complaining about something i'm like man like whatever i i feel like true fishing fans are not the ones complaining they're the ones that most of them are sitting at home and looking back like i could do what he's doing with that technology and they're not out trying it i mean the people that are doing that really are not admiring the sport. I feel like they're the ones that they keep up with it, but I don't feel like they're true fishing fans. I feel like that they would rather complain um, maybe because they're not there or they have nothing else better to do. But um, like you said, I mean, we, every person in this rookie class caught fish before for facing sonar was out. It may have enhanced what we do a little bit. You know, of course we've learned more, about what fish do and where they live most of the time and whatnot. But, um, you know, maybe not all nine of us would have qualified without it this year, but I feel like that the nine that made it are still heck of a fishermen with or without it on the front of their boat. Well, I, I know you guys are, and I, and I look forward to spending the whole, whole season with you. And uh, hopefully we can do one of these, a longer version in the future to dig a little deeper into you. But I got one last question and it's from David Fritz. Okay. He asked the question. Didn't know who he was asking it to, but he asked it. And the question is, have you ever lied about the lure you used to catch a bass? Yes. 
sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for telling the truth. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> the one and only John Garrett coming to the Bassmaster Elite Series in 2024. JT Tompkins, you are the 2023 EQ Bassmaster Opens Angler of the Year, and you're going to the Bassmaster Elite Series of all the highly totted nine qualifiers. Dude, you whooped them all. How in the world did you do that? I don't know. It was a lot of it, I think, was just getting on one of those roles that everyone, you know, dreams of getting on and. Once you once I got on it, I was lucky enough to stay on it for nine tournaments. And that's a boring answer. Give me some goodness. Come on, there's yeah. more to it than I was on a roll. If it was my time, it's my time. We really want to get to know you. Yeah. So basically, like honestly, I fish three hundred days of the year. I work my butt off. And I've been doing this since I was four years old. I mean, I've been born to fish. So my dad, he raised me up. I mean, I started out when I was four years old in a fourteen foot John boat with a four 40 horsepower trailer handle when I was going around in my little local river on Winya Bay. So ever since then, all the way through high school, you know, learning to fish locally. I mean, I've been, this has been what I've been meant to do since I was four years old. And I mean, I think all of it coming together this year between the hard work, the last three years, you know, turning professional after from co-angling 16 to turning professional at 18 to now, I just think it all came together for nine tournaments. And I think that's really what happened. See, that's the freaking answer, dude, because you it, that's the weird thing about fishing. And and hopefully this show does a little to try to kind of change that. But do you admit that there is like podcast questions that people get into and you just get in that routine? Well, if it's my time, it's my time. I, I, I just got on a good roll. Like, what? am I overthinking this? No, like, I think you're dead on. <laughs> but I think there's a really good reason to it. So, like. Fishing is not one of those sports where you can have – you can in your mind, but it's really hard to project supreme confidence yeah. in what you, because fishing's so up and down. It's I mean, you're fishing for a fish. You you can't see it. You don't know where – you don't truly know where it's going. I mean, even if you do find them, they're not, they might not bite. You know, there's so many aspects. If they do bite, you might not get them in the boat. You know, your boat might break down. Your trolling motor might break. There's so many aspects that having supreme confidence and being able to just straight up tell people – Hey, I'm the best. That's how it's going to be. And you're going to have to deal with it. Like having that kind of confidence that you can have in other sports is tough to do in bass fishing. So I think we get caught up in what's the safe way to go about it. What's like the, you know, I think that's how we all get caught up in. And it's honestly true because there's nothing worse than going out and be like, all right, I'm the best. And then bombing. Like, <laughs> that is a terrible feeling. And so I feel like the safe answers, you know, keep you away from that. But also it's, you know, it's more entertaining to be that guy and also back it up. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. You, you kind of called your shot and backed it up. I mean, not nobody may know about it other than me, you, and and maybe a bartender. But I remember standing beside you a after you fished the classic, after it was all over, and you're like, you go through that emotional roller coaster, and everybody's exhausted. Like, it it's such a high, but it's, but I remember you looking at me and being like, I need to get here. I need to make the elites i mean how much did that experience drive you to achieve what you did yeah so when you when you get to a stage like that where it's the top of the line it's the top of the hill and you're standing across from all the best fishermen in the world and I'm, i didn't do amazing but i made the day three cut in the bassmaster classic and knowing that when everybody tried their best the top the top 50 guys in the world tried their best and i was able to you know, finishing the top 50% of them that gave me the confidence to know that if I work as hard as I possibly can, I can be right here every single year for the rest of my life that I want to do it. So doing that. And then the previous year I got a win on the Chesapeake Bay in the open late in the year. And I, I feel like I just honestly got on a roll. Like, you know, I think the confidence, the experience, everything coming together, like the simple answer also backed up with like the long-term answer. I think it all just came together for nine tournaments and it was really awesome to see that. But no, the classic was a huge boost in confidence for sure. I think, it, it, I mean, ultimately it is all about a, every sports about a role. Like, it, and it's the hardest thing. I mean, I'm sure through your career, you've gone through it at different stages where you, and the more you try to overthink it, 
almost the worst. You know what I mean? It's like driving a car and being like, don't go in the ditch. Don't go in the ditch. Well, you're thinking about the ditch and you're going to end up in the freaking yep. ditch. <laughs> um, how? How do you avoid that going to the elite series? Because it's it is a step up in competition. Like what what are you fearful to go to the elite series? Is there any fear in you? Um, I don't know if there's fear much. I I feel anticipation. Like I'm waiting. I'm just dying to get out of there. Like right now, I'm kind of in the. It's in the sponsorship mode. It's in the social media mode. It's in the growing the um other side of the sport. So I'm kind of stuck there right now. But as soon as I get my boat back and I can kind of settle down and get back in my zone, that's what I'm going to have to do is get just get right back on the horse and, and keep keep going. So the sooner I can do that, the better I'll do. And I can't wait to do that because every single time I've had a bad roll or a bad tournament, if you look every single year, my worst tournament is my first tournament. Every single year. I don't know what it is. Like last year, my first four tournaments of the Opens, I didn't cut a check. And I was kind of losing it. And then I went the rest. I never missed a check the rest of the season. So it, it always seems like I always have a slow start. So the sooner I can start my season, technically like January 1st, I can get out there pre-practicing. That's when I think I can come and do my own. Because last year I had some medical problems that didn't allow me to do that. And I had to take a big break. And um, so hopefully this year I can get on the horse a little bit sooner. And we can we can try to make something happen early and keep it going throughout the rest of the season too. Uh, I can't wait to watch it go down. We don't have a lot of time. I got to get to know you really well. So I'm going to just fire questions at you. Okay. Absolutely. Favorite movie. Um, Real Steel. <laughs> Favorite food. Um, gosh, dang, that's a tough one. I don't know. Like I had Cajun chicken Alfredo one time and it was amazing. I had it in Louisiana. Elite series pro you're most intimidated by. Steve Kennedy. Elite Series Pro, you're friendliest with Jeff Gustafson or Coop Gallant. Elite Series Pro that you do not want to see on your spot at the first event of the year. Brandon Polinick or Patrick Waters. <laughs> Any love in your life? No. Single. Absolutely. Ready to mingle? I got too much going on to be honest, but you know, it depends. Situational. Yep. <laughs> favorite favorite song. Um, I get my walkout song, like if I'm trying to get pumped up in the morning, my walkout song, You Can't Stop Me by Andy Minio. It's it is it'll get you fired up. It's an awesome song. So that's what you're coming out to. Absolutely. Have you envisualized that? Like it, it while and I don't mean like now, but even just leading up to this quest. I mean, what you did to go through all nine events to win Angle of the Year, it's incredible. But but have you visualized the stage part of it or is it all about the fishing to you? I'm more on the just the straight up catch and fish part, but the stage is definitely like when I went across the Bassmaster Classic stage with that song playing, I was like, I gotta do this a hundred more times. So I love that. So I'm excited about all of it, especially the stage side. I think it's something I I feel like I need to embrace a little more, come out of my shell and try to try to grow on that side a lot. So you feel you feel there's a lot of you that we need to get to know. Yes, yeah. I feel like there's a lot of that I need to start expressing and learning how to because I I mean, I literally fish every single day of my life and I don't like not going to say I don't get out much, but I I need to learn to open up, not be so serious and business oriented just kind of let let things go and have fun with it more attractive um taylor swift or a 10 pound largemouth bass 10 pound largemouth bass for sure <laughs> we're working on it <laughs> um no dude I, i'm excited to see how it all works out for you um i appreciate you letting us know a little bit about you um but now i want you to really talk some dirt uh, you qualified with eight other individuals. You're going to be battling it out with them again next year for the rookie of the year title. Give me some dirt on one of them. Oh, and just man. so you know, before you answer, they have opportunity to give dirt on you. So oh, sure. don't, don't hold back. Oh, uh, it's hard to say, but John Gary, he's been on my tail. I'm, we gotta see if we can keep this going and, 
keep this battle going. I'm excited to get on him next year and see if we can battle it out for first and second again. I'm excited about that. You're, have, you're just, horrible at giving dirt. You're oh, really bad. Like that was just the I, nicest. It's hard to. Why? Because there's no guarantees. Like, see, he's confident to say like one spot's already like guaranteed. Like I got that spot. I don't have that. Like you never know what can happen. But like for sure, I mean, I feel like it's gonna be a me and him are gonna make another run at it, and I feel like he's gonna have to catch him. All right, we got one final thing to go through here. We started something a week ago in this show, so it is a hallowed tradition. We have to do this. You're the angler of the year, so you will get the second part of it where all your predecessors did not get that part of it. It is called Answer a Question, Ask a Question. Last week's guest was David Fritz. He did not know who we were going to talk to this week, but he gave you a random question. I'm going to ask you that question, and then afterwards, you're going to be able to, be able to ask a question for whoever next week's guest is. It um, It's something we're doing to try to keep people watching. <laughs> the question is, have you ever lied about a lure you used to catch a fish? Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. Like, thousands of times. <laughs> like, it's a hobby of fishermen at this point. I mean, like, it's what we do. It's what we do best. Okay. I like how you <laughs> own it. I like how you own it. You're comfortable in your own skin. All right, you got a question. Who you get to ask anything, and and Lord knows who next week's guest is. Any question, fishing, non fishing, can be anything. Oh Lord, um, who? Oh, man, that's a tough one. Who's going to win Angler of the Year in the Bassmaster Elite Series next year? Oh my God, you're ruining it. This is so bad. Oh, no that's one or I'm going to make up my own question. I, we can't do that. Come on. Who's well, gonna, that is the most vanilla question ever. Like, ask them if they've been to jail, they have tattoos, something. Yeah, that's honestly a really good one. If they've been to jail. I, okay. You know, who's your next guest? I like, can't you, tell you. I don't know. Yeah, that's a, do you think they've been to jail? I feel like it's Matt Robertson. There'd be a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think... I don't no. think there would be a chance. I <laughs> can pretty much guarantee you. Uh, but oh, Lord. Uh, thanks. Thanks for doing this. Congrats on a great year. I'm looking forward to hanging out with you uh, for this coming year and many, many more years to come. So um, where are you hanging out right now? Are you Whereabouts I'm, are you? I'm at my house finally for once. So. We Will you show me? Is that your room? Will you show me your room or is that a filthy mess? There's about 400 rods and a YOLO tech and two TVs. Come on, show it to me. Show it to me. Oh, you flipped us all around here. Oh, Hold on. The okay, there we go. Nice, smooth movements. Wow. That back uh -huh. head. That's Got a beautiful picture. My old, there's my giant hat collection from all sponsors and Bassmaster and everyone giving you hats and there's like 100 rods. That's where I play wow. games. I do play games and I also box, so. You're a boxer. Oh, I, I did MMA for a long time. So. Nice. Yeah. I, uh, nice. I look forward to exploring that with you. Yeah, yeah. that's what above those trophies, I, those are all my plaques from when I used to do tournaments for when I was younger. I did tournaments for MMA, grappling, all sorts of wow. stuff. Mm -hmm. Randy Blockett recently <laughs> said on this show that he is uh he used to be a competitive um karate in the kumites i believe but now he does jujitsu competitions um i feel like you'd probably like to fight him <laughs> <laughs> no i don't want to fight anybody but definitely i'd like to I, there's a few people it'd be fun to you know like the wrestling competitions that people get in on i just oh. I'd, uh, they happen hard. they happen oh. in the elite series well, group now so Oh, uh, there, there's a there's an after hours club. There's a fight club, but you know the number one rule of fight club. So I'll see you there. <laughs> the one and only JT Tompkins. Hopefully you learned a little something from this show. I know I did, but I need your help. Our rookies were awesome at answering David Fritz's question with our brand new feature called Answer a Question, Ask a Question. 
But JT Tompkins, our Angler of the Year, who I gave the opportunity to ask next week's guest a question, was horrible at that part. Really, really bad. So I need you guys in the comments to give me a question. Without knowing who next week's guest is, I'll give you a couple of hints. He is a Bass Fishing Hall of Famer, and he is also one of the people that I like to talk to most. That's all I'm giving you. That's it. That's all. But let's get creative. Let's ask some crazy questions. Throw them out there. I will pick the one that gets the most likes or maybe just the one that I like the most. But uh, give me questions for next week's guest so we can continue our tradition of answer a question, ask a question. And that's it. I mean, we've been together long enough. Uh, I, I appreciate you sticking to the very end here. I'll be back next week with a very special pre-Christmas show. You do not want to miss this one. But until next time, I'm going Christmas shopping. And, and if you haven't yet, maybe you should. Enjoy being. And as always, Bob Cobb, take it away. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Because Bob Cobb of the Bassmasters told you to. You hear?